Okay guys, so we talked about how we cannot trust our eyes, how they can fool us easily, right? We talked about what some of the common settings you're going to be encountering when trying to calibrate your screen with a proper device and also what do they mean and which one you should choose in what situation. Well now it's time to take a look at the actual calibration and profiling process. Now on screen here you can see that I have something I refer to as calibrated monitor. In other words, this is what I would expect the image to look. But for illustration and demonstration purposes, imagine that this is uncalibrated monitor. It looks absolutely different, right? So what we want to do is want to take this uncalibrated monitor and put it into calibrated state and save it as a profile so that somebody seeing the same image on another screen can see it the same way and also that we can trust what we see on our monitor to be somewhat accurate. So if this is calibrated, this is uncalibrated, well you need a proper calibration device. Now you know that we can trust our eyes even though you can software uh, calibrate your screen it's not the ideal solution so we need to find a calibration device and the most popular two companies out there I would say would be X-Rite and Data Color. Now those two companies are not the only one that make calibration devices but they are probably the most popular one so you're probably either going to have one of these devices already or maybe an earlier version of this or if you're buying you might check out some of them. So X-Rite sells basically two lines of products and that will be the more pro, pro version of products and some of those are have more settings you know they're better calibration device they of course cost more and they can also also calibrate other type devices not just uh, a display but things like printers and you know um, a projector or even uh, even mobile devices and they also sell a color monkey series of products there are actually two of them which you can use if you're on a budget and you just want something to calibrate your screen so that's from X-Rite pretty much and I've listed uh, the website at the bottom so you can check out some of their other products and what they're offering and you now this will change over the years and you might be uh, having some of those products already but maybe a older version you might want to upgrade it all depends so I cannot give you all the information it's best that you visit their website and see for yourself and on the right we have data color which is another company which produces uh, they're quite famous for their spider line of products and they typically come just like x right except they have the same brand name spider and they come with three flavors essentially express pro and elite and those three are designed, you know, the beginners would be maybe using Express, intermediate users might be satisfied with Pro, and more expert type users would be interested in Elite version, and they cost according to that kind of category. Uh, at the bottom you also see their website, so you can check that out and see for yourself. I uh, will be demonstrating this with this type of a device which would be not Spider 4 Elite like you see one here but the one I have which is Spider 3 Elite and it's a previous version but the principle is just the same so what you would do is you would get a CD usually right with the calibration device you put that into your computer and you install the software that comes along with or you download it from uh, internet and you install the software and it basically open up, opens up its own application and uh, let me just zoom that in so you can see so you have basically two versions of any product that you're gonna buy there now if you buy from x -Rite some other products this user interface might be different you might have less or more options and things of that nature but ultimately you will always find that the three settings, the three key settings that we talked about, right, the white point, the luminance and the gamma, those will always be present. So this is just an example of one that I happen to have. If I had some other ones I would show you those, but it's the same principle. So usually you would have a more straightforward wizard type approach where basically the application itself is guiding you step by step and explaining you what to do. And this is for more beginner users. 
and uh, some devices, especially more higher end ones, will also give you like an expert view where you can choose yourself all the settings. So it doesn't tell you what it is, it just tells you what you want to choose and uh, all in one place. Uh, this is, I think, uh, only available in the elite version of this software. So if you're using Spider Pro or something, you would still have those three key features, but it wouldn't be displayed like this. It would be displayed in some other manner, more, you know, more basic version of interface. So as you can see in this particular device, I can choose white point. I can choose and manually, by the way, I can choose uh, any gamma or even a curve that's not described by gamma. In this case, I chose L star just to point that out. And the screenshot you see here that's just an experiment to show you guys. It's not something I particularly use. Uh, then you have like for white bone, I you can see I set to recommended 6500K. And uh, also I can set my black point, which is kind of interesting because not all devices uh, allow this. And that's why I didn't mention among those three most key components, right? Well, anyway, once you choose your settings, what it will tell you, and this is whatever type of the device you're using, will tell you, hey, place your device here on screen. And then you would place your device on the screen where it tells you. And once you do, the program will run its internal application that will basically, you know, run a bunch of predetermined colors on your screen, such as black or different shades of gray and so on. And it will measure that against whatever your setting for the monitor is. And it will also measure based on, on its own uh, data and the settings you gave it what it should be and it's calculating the difference, right? At some point it will tell you, hey, your monitor is too bright and it will tell you reduce the brightness of the monitor and then you would might, um, because typically brightness is something you would do on your monitor, the rest of the settings you would probably do uh, will be uh, memorized in your profile at the end of calibration process and your graphic card will control things like um, gamma curve, you know, uh, the tonal response curves and things like that. But in terms of brightness, usually I ask you to adjust it yourself using the on-screen monitor controls. Now, this is might be for iMac or whatever, but if you have a different monitor, they will look different, but basically they will allow you to, to lower your brightness. Some will allow you to lower other things depending on what calibration and what monitor are you using. And also, if you're using a higher-end brand of monitor, some monitors actually have an option that the calibration device is designed specifically for that monitor. So what it does is, is it's um, these controls that you see here, uh, you don't have to set them manually. The calibration device actually communicates with the settings for the monitor, such as brightness, contrast, and some other stuff which is very very useful because the calibration takes less time uh, it's more accurate you don't have to do it anything manually just set your device and let it play its course and you can also save presets of different calibration settings and you can just easily switch them back and forth without recalibrating everything which is pretty cool so once you set that it will continue its course right it will display different colors like red green and blue in different shades and so on well, white as well, right? Once it's done, it will tell you, hey, name this newly created profile. And profile is essentially just a piece of data that tells the graphic card what it needs to do each time it boots the system in order to adjust for uncalibrated state of your monitor and, and switch it to calibrated state. In other words, switch it to well-known predetermined state. So, uh, so usually it will give you, in spider case, it will give you like an image where you can switch it on and off and you can check uh, how your new calibrated monitor now looks on various images. For example, how it would look if, if it's for skin tones or for black and white and so on. And you can like switch before and after so you can see how it was and how it is now if you want to check that out. It will also give you in terms of spider maybe different with other products but in spider case we also usually will give you uh, ability to check your profile in terms of how much color gamut uh, where did it move the primary colors on on this um, diagram and where you can compare it with other profiles 
So once you're done with that, it basically saves all that data needs to be adjusted as a monitor profile and that's what called that's what's called monitor profile usually gets it saved wherever your other color profiles are on your computer they differ from Mac to PC and we'll talk more about this when we talk about profiles for images and here's the thing once you have your profile every time you boot your system the profile gets loaded into your video card which then adjusts your monitor and that's called calibrated and profiled monitor so now you have set your monitor each time into predetermined proper state well you need to repeat this process depending on what your standards are and needs and so on but typically you would want to do this maybe um, once a month you know, because your monitor might dr uh, drift over time it's an unstable device so usually with software that comes along with your calibration device it has a reminder so you can set it for let's say one remind me every month and every at the end of every month after every 30 days or so it will pop up a message saying hey you haven't calibrated your monitor do you want to do it again and then you would again just for for the sake of monitor being unstable device and drifting from ideal settings you turn it back so you pretty much have the calibrated and profile monitor all the time now if you're sending your, um, if you're thinking about color management workflow, you also need to do the same thing on another monitor that you might want to display your images, or whoever you're sending your images to would also need to do the same thing. It will also need to ca calibrate and profile its monitor using the same settings, and then you would have uh, basically a foundation for color management. But that's only half of the story, because the other half of the story is that not only do you have profiles for your display for your monitor you can also have profiles for image and that image needs to be read that profile needs to be read in a color managed application such as Photoshop otherwise you might have two equally calibrated monitors but unless you have a profile assigned to the image it doesn't know how to read the image and not only do you need to have the profile embedded inside of image, you also need the color uh, managed application, the kind of application that can read that profile. And that's Photoshop, of course, or some other color managed application. And then, of course, we talked about the, the ambient lighting, which is also something that can affect how you see your image. And I think that now you're starting to put together all these elements to see how all these elements, if they don't match, you don't get to see the magic of color management right so they all need to fit together well I think this explains pretty much the calibration process like I said I used uh, spider elite 3 for an example which is just one of the products on the market you can use any other product the principle would be pretty much the same uh, the interface might look a little bit different or something like that but the process is pretty much the same